almond milk. And this is the base for what I put in my protein powder, what I combine to make my shake post-workout. I use a whey protein isolate and I use almond milk as the, uh, the liquid. Some people use water, some people use milk, I use almond milk. And I started to look into, I mean, why I even care about this topic to begin with. Uh, milk doesn't work too well with me and also I don't feel uh, as if warm milk tastes that good. So I kind of like don't like to use milk post-workout, even if it is a, a, a time where I'm trying to gain weight. Water, uh, I use a non-flavored uh, whey protein isolate. So water with that, it tastes really nasty. So what I was using was something from the store. And I was concerned about sugar because they, they all quite, they have quite a bit of sugar in it. So I looked for the unsweetened one, but then I chose the vanilla. Uh, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen store brands that are very similar to this. I'm just gonna go over with you the, the, the nutritional value of this, okay? One serving of this has 30 calories. One serving is only 30 calories. Now for some people that's good, low calories, I understand, uh, but for what this is and the fact that it's almond milk and what we're supposed to get from this is good fat. That 30 calories is really not that much. So what is the rest of it composed of? Let's take a look at the ingredients. The ingredients. Almonds. Well, that's a good thing. The first ingredient's almonds. Filtered water and then almonds again. So they filtered water and I guess put almonds in it again. Now, although it says it contains less than 2% of this, if this is a potent product, okay, even a very small amount of it can make a big difference in the total solution. Even though the total solution contains less than 2% of these products, you know, a still a small amount of it could make a visual change or taste change to the entire product. Let's take a look at this. We have vitamin and mineral blend, calcium carbonate, vitamin E acetate, vitamin A palmette, uh, vitamin D2, sea salt, natural flavor, locust bean gum, uh, gel and gum, ascorbic acid to protect freshness. Okay, it has zero grams of sugar, and it has 2.5 grams of fat. And this is what I was using. Now I'm going to tell you why I decided to make my own almond milk. So this was a store-bought almond milk that I got. And I guess because of YouTube, we have to cover up everything. I'm still learning this stuff. Anyway, I decided that there was too much gum and too much filler in this. It looks good. Tastes kind of shallow. There really wasn't enough calories in it for me. I didn't want sugar. I wanted the fat. I wanted the good fat and I wanted all the great things that almonds provide. And I'm sh everybody has Googled, you can just Google all the great things that almonds provide nutrient. Now, I bought this juicer. I bought this juicer that juices almonds and makes almond milk and it, it's called a Slow Star. It's a very slow juicer, which means that it doesn't produce a lot of heat. By not producing heat, it should keep all the enzymes still fresh for two days. At least that's what it says. Now, let's talk about the different types of almonds that I put in to the juicer. Now, I juiced all of them the same. It was a one cup of almonds to two cups of water. It was filtered water. I used filtered water, spring water. And so this is what they all look like. This was the first brand. This was from the local uh, wholesaler, the wholesale, big wholesale store. You can buy this in uh, bulk, get it kind of cheap, okay? Um, this is what it looked like. And you can see how it separates, and you can see how this one right here does not separate. So store-bought never separates. It just, it never separates. Although it says shake well, it never separates. This came out of this juicer. All the following came out of the juicer. This came out of the juicer, and as you can see what it looks like, okay? 
Um, and now this one right here was from our local farmer's market, quote, uh, grocery store. And I, I put a few of them out so you could see what they look like, okay? Now, before I go any further, I'd like to explain why I got the next two that I got, okay? I bought, um, I bought a product, or I actually went to a grocery store, I can't say the name of it because of uh, uh, YouTube, but I went to a grocery store and they were doing a demonstration. And the demonstration was on a product that was an almond milk that only had three ingredients, similar to the three ingredients that I put in my juicer. It had sea salt, it had water, it had almonds, and this particular one that I sampled had a little bit of vanilla in it. And the product, actually, I brought it home and I compared it to the stuff that I bought uh, or that I had juiced from, that I bought from the stores that I had juiced. And I noticed, I noticed something very strange. Even though the product that I had sampled, that I had bought, was not pasteurized, Okay, listen to this. It was not pasteurized, okay? It was cold processed, similar to mine, okay? The problem was, the product that I made with these almonds, myself, using the same ingredients, it went bad. It actually fermented. You could smell it. You would open it up, there was bubbles, there was gas, and I couldn't figure out why. So I, I asked, I asked, and you know what? It just so happens that sometime around 2012, there was a outbreak of salmonella in almonds. And 100% of the almonds that are grown in the, for sale in this country are grown in California. 100%. Now, I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna get into you know, why California, whatever, but it takes at least one gallon of water to produce one almond, one almond. And it takes two years for an almond tree to produce an almond that can be utilized. Two years, okay? So during that time, if there's a forest fire or something like that, that's gonna drive the cost of almonds up have companies put fillers in their products. Those fillers then make the product look like real almonds, but you're not getting the quality of what is essential from the almond. Now, as bodybuilders or as people who are care about our health, we shouldn't be putting gum and fillers in our body if we can avoid it. Now, if, if you don't have the time, they, act, they do make a product. I can't say the name, but they make a product that uh, does not have pasteurized almonds and that's the key the pasteurized almonds actually fermented unbelievable unbelievable they were pasteurized but they fermented now what we did was we did some investigating and found out that in another part of the world um, Spain I think I can mention that um, they grow almonds and they're all organic, they're non-GMO, and they're also not pasteurized. So I went and bought those. And those are over here. From the same, from the same juicer, I juiced almonds. As you can see, these were made for almond grade, these were made for milk grade. Here's what they look like, okay? Let me turn them over for you. And these over here, or from another company in Spain. And here's the milk, see how it separates, by the way. And here's another company in Spain. And these are also, you know, they, there is no such thing as GMO in Spain, it's, it's outlawed, so uh, it's all organic regardless. And here's what it looks like. Now here's how it separates, okay? Now you can see the separation in the pulp. Now we did remove the pulp, and this is the juice. Again, this did come from the juicer. So we don't really know exactly how many calories are in this. However, it's very clear to see that it's not 30 calories. So somebody who's trying to put good fat in their body, 
to protect themselves from maybe some other substances they're taking or whatever, or just to keep their organs healthy, should have the quality of the almonds, not the fillers, okay? So I went the extra step and made this, made the choice of buying this from here, from the United States, and found out that it spoiled. And it really spoiled my plans because I was very upset. I was upset that I went through so much trouble to make almond milk and make it better and find out that in the end it spoiled in one night. Now here's what we do. We make the almond milk, we, we blanch them. On the outside, blanch them means soak them in water. We soaked all of them in water for the same amount of time. And when we blanch it, it swells and the skin, as you can see on the outside, okay, uh, is removed. And once it's removed, then you just see the creamy white almond. Now you don't have to do this, okay? However, what we noticed was that, that the mold was growing on the, on the uh, skin. So when we removed the skin, we found out that it lasted a few more days and didn't mold, but it still was nowhere in comparison to these. Now, everybody's talking about almond milk. Everybody. I mean, I have seen a lot of videos myself on almond milk and I say to myself, what's the difference? You know, I mean, what's the difference? What's the difference between using this juicer or using this blender and putting it through a, a nut bag or whatever? Number one, the slower it is, the enzymes you keep. However, here is the big trick. If they come from the United States, they've already been pasteurized. If they've already been pasteurized, they have no enzymes, none. So it really doesn't matter then. You can go ahead and use a high speed blender and you'll still get the fat, but you won't get all the other essential elements, which really, really help the body. And I'm not even gonna name them because there's so many, okay? But I mean, these are the things that are even more important than the good fat which you're not getting in here and you're not getting anything else too. And this is not to downplay the store-bought brand, it's just to actually emphasize how much calories, quality calories you can put in your shake post-workout to make the whey protein isolate sustain itself, sustain release, so you get more for your buck, okay? I mean, this is really about quality over quantity and, and, and price, okay? So we bought these. And the taste is totally different. Now I have a cup here. Here's a cup. I'm gonna go ahead and ex I'm gonna start on this side right here. Actually, you know, you know what? I'm gonna start on this side right here. Here's the store bought. Store bought does not separate. Okay. It doesn't taste bad. It's a little bit watered down. Um, I can smell the vanilla in it, but I cannot smell the almond in it. Okay, so let's put that aside first. So you got that. This is from the store. Now I'm gonna shake it. Let's take a good look, take a, clo uh, take a close up look. Here is how much is separated. And I want you to know that the two that were pasteurized, the two that were pasteurized, they separated more than the ones that were not pasteurized from Spain. Not only that, but they were also much easier to remove the skin off of, which was I thought was kind of strange. But then when I realized what they did was when they pasteurize it, they heat it. So that actually allows it to pop the skin off at a much shorter time. I'm gonna go ahead and shake up this one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna smell it, I'm gonna taste it. Okay, I'll tell you exactly how I feel about this. Now this is from the United States. These were made in, uh, these almonds came from California, okay? It was pasteurized, and this came from your local, like, bulk uh, grocery store. Okay, here's the cup. Uh, let me smell it first. Well, there's no vanilla added to it, so I don't smell vanilla. I, I do smell a, a hint of almonds. It's, you know... Uh, I see some bubbling. These were all made yesterday morning. You see some bubbling. I shook it up. There's some bubbling. Um, does not smell like fermentation. More than none here. So 
It's thicker, it's not as watered down, really doesn't have that much flavor. Um, I did put a little bit of sea salt in each one, uh, a, an eighth of a teaspoon um, in each one of these to preserve them. Um, and really it kind of neutralizes out this flavor right here. So I do taste slight amount of sea salt, but not really much, not really much on the almond side. Slightly, not much. Okay, these are organic by the way. These were not organic, these were organic. Okay, but they were still, California still pasteurized. Let's take a close look. Okay, see the separation? Let's take a close look at the almonds. Okay, all right. And again, these are from the bulk section. These are, past, these are pasteurized, but they are organic. I'm gonna shake it up. And they're raw, by the way, these are raw. So uh, we're going from, you know, in my opinion, we're going from, you know, each grade is potentially uh, a little bit better than the other. Okay, so. Oh, interesting. Now, I hope you guys trust me because I have pretty big nose. So I hope you trust that what I smell is smell a vision. <laughs> All right, no kidding. This smells slightly fermented. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm still gonna drink a little bit of it because that's that's the whole point of this YouTube video. If I get sick, I'll 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 do another another video about that. But if I wasn't doing this video, I probably wouldn't drink this. <laughs> All right. It does smell sweeter than this one. It does smell a little bit more fermented than this one. I'm not sure why. It's organic. I'm not sure why. Again, you know, I'm not about pushing organic or not, you know, fighting the GMO. I, I, I don't. I, I'm about the truth. Okay. So let's take a taste of this. Okay. That wasn't good. Excuse me. Okay. <clears throat> That's gone bad. That was made yesterday morning. Organic bulk section gone bad. Waste. Waste. Waste of time. Waste of money. Waste of energy. All right. No good. Man, that was gross. I'm sorry. That was really nasty. Um, that was really gross. Okay. I had to rinse my palate out. That was pretty nasty. Um, here's a brand from Spain. Um, this brand from Spain, their quote was, it's specifically made for making milk out of. Let's take a look at the almonds. They do look different, by the way. Okay, let's take a look at the milk. There's no bubbling at all. Um, you can see the uh, total separation in the layers right here, okay? All right, uh, something I'd like to mention about both the two brands from Spain that were not pasteurized. Uh, the skin was harder to remove, okay? Um, which is called blanching. The skin was hard to remove, and like I said, I'm, I'm imagining that it's because it wasn't heated first, so this is the way it's supposed to be. It has all of the great benefits that uh, almonds do. However, let's be realistic. If you make the stuff at home and you don't put preservatives in it, then it's gonna go bad. So drink it, don't waste it, all right? And that's the whole point. You can figure out how much you gotta use. Again, I'm gonna shake it. This smells pretty creamy. I don't know, I can't, I mean, 
I mean, there are bubbles. I shook it, so I'm sure there are bubbles, but the bubbles aren't. It doesn't smell fermented. Um, it smells quite tasty. Let me let me taste it actually. By the way, I haven't tried yeast yet, so this is all raw, real, live experimental. Okay, um, these are raw. These are organic. Okay, we had to block out the name. Um, so they're they're non-GMO certified. They are for, they have you know healthy fats, plant protein, blah blah blah. Uh, they were imported from Spain. Let's go. Delicious, delicious. Cheers. So far, this is the best one. Smooth, creamy. The sea salt is uh, is very apparent. You can taste it, but it, it's not overwhelming. Um, it had a very very nice texture, and um, it, it, it doesn't smell doesn't taste at all like it's fermenting. Again, these were all made at the same time, so what we're really finding out is is that it's the nut. It's not the the way it's made. It's not you know how. It's, it's, it's the source, the source of the actual almond, where the almond comes from. All right, let's try the next one here. These are also from Spain. Now these were not, they were not, it did not claim that they were for you making almond milk, but um, they are, uh, they are from Spain and they are non-GMO because in Spain, GMOs are, are not allowed. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's take a look at the, uh, the the separation. Now, the separation is is a lot like the other one. It's it, it's you know you can see clear separation here, and then it's a little bit creamy on top. Uh, so it does look good. No uh, no bubbles. So I'm imagining this is not fermented either. And you can add a few drops of vanilla. We'll, we're going to make another video on how to make different types of almond milk. But for right now, here we go. It smells a lot like that. Um, creamy bubbles, but they're not, they don't, doesn't smell sweet. No, no fermentation. Okay. And when you pour it, the, bu the bubbles are gone, which is good. That's a good thing. That means that, you know, the bubbles just came from shaking it. Because if, it, if it's fermenting, then they would continue to bubble. Oh, wow. Wow. That's the best one so far. I really thought this one would be better because I didn't, I, I didn't know. This says it's for making almond milk and this doesn't. This was more expensive than this, believe it or not. I mean, literally twice the cost of this. Uh, I, unfortunately, you're gonna have to message me to find out which ones these are. Um, but the point I'm making is that it wasn't about the money. I mean, uh, excuse me. Mm. It's phenomenal. The, the, the taste of the almonds actually, you, you, it, it, it hides the sea salt. I mean, it's so much better that like, I'm very surprised that um, it tastes so creamy and, and so, uh, so delicious, you know? Okay, so non-pasteurized does not seem to ferment. It seems like we had some fermentation here with organic uh, pasteurized, California almonds. Now guys, ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to buy almonds also, you have to think about this. 100% of the almonds that are made in the US that we buy are pasteurized. That means that they destroy the good bacteria, which means you're not getting what you could be getting. Now, in Spain, they don't do that. This particular bag is not pasteurized. 
eating this almond is much healthier. It actually looks different, it's flatter. Uh, the skin on this is much harder to take off. Here's a close up of what the actual raw or the nuts look like, and I'm gonna show you each one, okay? These are the ones that were bought from our, we can't mention where, but our local uh, discount um, bulk store. Um, there's quite a few different ones. Use your imagination. Um, this one was bought from our, it, it's organic, and it's, it's bought from our farmer's market. We bought it out of the bulk section, so we used the scoop and put it in the bag. The bag. Okay. This one was not pasteurized. It's from Spain, and if you can see, it's it's a lot harder and it's a lot thinner. I mean, it's 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 much in more interesting than. Let's let's just take a quick look back over here. These are much fatter. They look like they look fatter. This is darker even. This is these are pasteurized ones are lighter. So the pasteurized ones clearly are lighter than the unpasteurized ones. I mean, it's it's very clear. Uh, this was the one from Spain that was not pasteurized, made for uh, almond milk, and this is the one from Spain that wasn't particularly branded uh, as an almond milk maker, but I found this one to be the best, and it was also half off, and you can get it uh, where everybody gets everything nowadays and gets it shipped with a smiley face. Can't say anything more. Guru Me here about to show you my post-workout shake with my favorite homemade almond milk. The one that I just really loved so much. And what I normally do is I separate the powder from the, uh, from the uh, almond milk and the uh, blueberries, which are over here, organic, third a cup. I don't use a lot, I try to keep it really not sweet. So it's just one cup of the homemade almond milk. One third of a cup of frozen blueberries. That gives me the, uh, makes it cold, tastes good. Two scoops of flavorless, colorless, whey isolate. There's a few companies that make this. Um, actually, I'm not gonna do two scoops because this is not really post workout there. But if it was post-workout, let's say 40 to 50 grams of white protein isolate. Please subscribe so I can feed you science. Quick shout out to John Norris of The Loyal Brand, www.theloyalbrand.com for supplying today's attire. This is one of his hoodies and his shirts.